Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here. It's been a while, been a while since we've done one of these um, speed builds that I do in one day. So if you don't know, in the in the past, I've done these one day speed builds where I pick a ship. Um, I wanna say the last one was either a really poorly built Defiant or the pretty, I think, pretty decent uh, Voyager, Intrepid class from Star Trek. So both of those were Star Trek ships. Now, I have built the, uh, the, the Y-Wing in the past, but this time I decided, you know what, let's make it a bit bigger, a little bit more to scale in the Star Wars scale, and let's make sure it has a working turret on the top like an actual Y-Wing, and uh, let's give it shield generators from the shield generator mod. Now, my first Y-Wing that I built a long time ago, you guys can look it up on the channel if you wanna see it, uh, was more for trying to get like all the lines right on it, so I used a lot of mods, way too many mods to ever be able to use the ship in just like that, you know, that random server people are just you know, derping around on. You want to paste in one of your ships that you've built. Now, I've got, you can't see it, we're on board my, uh, my Quasar here that I built a while ago in Space Engineers. Uh, it's a, a Rebel Carrier. I've already put the shield generators on, that's what those blocks are to the back. And trying to figure out how the nacelles are going to work out, but... Um, uh, so I, we're on the, the, the Quasar, and you can't see it, but off screen is perfect Blinky's Y-Wing and then like the, the corpse of my original Y-Wing from back in the day. There it is, there you can see it in the corner there. Um, yeah, so I like I, I put those in there to kind of get an idea for scale. I knew I wanted to go a bit bigger than Blinkies, yet I still wanted to be like 90% vanilla except for the shield generators. I also wanted the shield generators to be removable. That way I could just paste this into a vanilla server and still kind of mess around with it. Now, I debated back and forth on how I was going to do one of these nacelles. I, I must do like six iterations on these nacelles trying to get them to look right. It's so hard too because in the on the actual Y-Wing it's these really like thin um, pieces of metal that they've got at like a frame around where these engine bits go. And then on like the old school, I think there's just like a pane of glass in between these uh, racks, I guess you'd call them that I'm building right now. Um, I know that's how it was back in like, way back in the day when I had a Y-Wing like toy as a kid. It had these bits of glass there. Uh, I don't know, maybe they are open, but yeah, I must reiterate on this a few times, but this is a lot bigger. Like this is about 20% bigger than Blinky's build uh, because I'm fitting in full-sized hydrogen tanks, unmodified hydrogen tanks into the nacelles because I want this to be usable, at least semi-usable in a survival game where you actually are burning hydrogen to fly it. Now. I tested it a little bit, flying this Y-Wing around now that it's finished. Actually, during a live stream, at the beginning of the last live stream I did with more, uh, we flew it, we dropped a couple of bombs. There is a downward facing, uh, yeah, I just took off all the nacelle frame bits, but there's a downward facing rocket launcher set up in there with a couple of cargo containers. So it's like shoveling, um, I decided I needed to work in space, so I brought it out here and made a copy of it. Uh, I needed to, to, to have enough cargo space to carry all the, the, the rockets, which is what we're gonna be using for the bombs, because the Y-Wing is a bomber in Star Wars, though. It's big, it's fairly slow, lore, low, lore. Uh, it's big, it's fairly slow, it's decently shielded. They, uh, like, this is Gold Squadron, so this is the one they use on the Death Star. I'm trying to figure out, okay, what kind of, like, breaking thrust do I want? How do I want to make the, the front end of these nacelles? Because they're, they're supposed to be these, like, rounded deals on the front, and it's Space Engineer, so rounded just really isn't a thing you could do. Um, I'm trying to use now, what is that, cargo containers? I think those are cargo containers. They might be um, conveyors, small conveyors that I'm trying to make the uh, the angles. Like, okay, that's not working. Maybe if I build them out even more, maybe if I put armor plates around them, uh, that would help protect them at least, at least protect the hydrogen containers if they take a round. So I'm trying to like figure that out. I started to like this idea because it's already bigger than the average build. I had to mess around with some of the uh, cargo containers there in the, uh, the hydrogen tanks. It's like flushing out these armor plates. Like, okay, but then I don't like the cargo containers. Like, those were just the biggest pain in the ass. Now, this thing can fly in atmosphere and in space using the, the hydrogen, but it also has, um, it, they're kind of hard to see. You can actually have them for braking thrust. It's got ion thrusters. It's got some underneath the cockpit, like underneath where the, uh, the, the, the turret is. There's a cargo container under there. There's an oxygen hydrogen generation system. There's actually two of those in there being powered. And then where I put that armor plating on the port and starboard side of the cockpit is actually hiding downward thrusting atmospheric engines to help it hover uh, without having to use hydrogen to do it. So it does operate on a 1.0 atmosphere, gravity atmosphere. Uh, it does operate in space. Yeah, now I'm starting to get a much better idea of like, oh, this works a lot better. I think I'm using rounded, <laughs> that's an engine test. It works. 
Okay, so now I'm working on the back end. Now, I, I messed around with a couple of ideas, but what I ended up liking was this idea of putting two merge blocks on the back. Now, the idea of the merge blocks is I can stick anything onto that outer merge block, and then I can just release it while I fly. Now, right before I had built this Y-Wing, um, I was testing out a multiplayer map where we had a couple of Y-Wings and A-Wings, and we were all coming in after an R. Quentin's cruiser, and the turrets and space engineers uh, are, well, they're, they're pretty deadly. Just the vanilla turrets can be pretty deadly. So if we have something to say, distract those turrets, like putting a merge block on the back of a Y-Wing like this, then you can release the merge block with a decoy block on the inside of it with like a reactor, the turrets will track that. Let those go in front of you, and that'll give you just enough time to drop your bombs or whatever else. Maybe you even attach, and I want to test this, uh, a couple of warheads wrapped up in some heavy armor on those merge blocks and drop those. Because heavy armor can do more damage uh, if it's going fast enough than rockets do in the way Space Engineers works. So that could be kind of cool. So those, those merge blocks are very like open-ended. You can do all kinds of stuff. Oh. I didn't think about this, but with the parachute mod, you could easily do like a resupply with those merge blocks on the back. Have a cargo container and a parachute attached to the back and have this thing like fly into the atmosphere from the quasar and drop those merge blocks. Parachutes pop open with the supplies on, you know, inside the, the cargo container or ammo or whatever it is that you're resupplying and have them drop and then you can have somebody like recover it. That could be really cool. I just thought, just thought of that. So there she is guys. Uh, she flies like a boat but she is a Y-Wing, so it's kind of expected. It's a bit more armored than I expected it to be with the light armor going all the way around the hydrogen tanks. All right, right now you can see I'm kind of painting it, kind of give it that like scuffed up look. I took a lot of that from um, uh, Perfect's build. I took a lot of the color palettes from his Y-Wing because I really like how he, he's got a, He's much better than I am at painting things, and he always like mix in multiple different colors to give it a little bit more depth and texture and a little bit more detail, just using the painting. So uh, I highly recommend you check out some of his builds. Uh, this though, this will be up on the workshop probably by the end of today's t today or to the day after this goes live, it should be. Uh, it will be a blueprint. It says it requires the shield generator mod, and if you have that, then obviously the shields will work. She has how much? 20,000 shields, I think, is what she's got by default. Uh, if you're using just the normal vanilla shield mod. Um, so it's it's relatively shielded. If you're using the Star Wars weapons mod, though, you're going to rip right through the shields on this thing with the, with like the TIE Fighter cannons. Because that, that mod, damage-wise, is a little OP. It really does too much damage, especially when you're trying to combine it with the shield mod. So, eh, it is what it is. But there it is. You guys can download it on the workshop, play around with it. Uh, I, I love seeing what you guys build. So if you've got your favorite Y-Wing uh, you know, that you've built and you put up on the workshop, let me know. Send me a link. I'd love to take a look at it and see what other people's renditions of this classic Star Wars ship uh, are out there. All right, guys. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel for more gaming, modding, sci-fi, sandbox, building goodness. And as always, thank you for watching.